So yes, it is. bear with us just a second. Thank you guys for, for jumping in. We don't know um, how many more will be uh, live with us today, um, but we are doing this new and then it will be available on Facebook as a recording. So people could come back and watch it at any time. And then of course we're trying this new time. So. What hey, time Tom. is it for you? What's Wait, that? What time is it for you right now? You're in the same time zone, right? Yeah, it's it's eight for yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. So we're on the same time zone, but this late for us. I mean, we our day starts really early. So on, when we're on the West Coast, this will be doable. If, if this that? works. But this time is is what the stats show is when people are online looking at this sort of stuff. So who knew people were up past seven? Yeah. <laughs> Sarah, um, mom, you're you're an hour ahead, right? You're right. It's nine here, and oh, obviously that time would always work better for our family, just because the kids are finally asleep. Yeah. 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 Well, we're gonna go ahead and get started tonight. It's great to be with you for another virtual family forum, and the faithful Matthewson family is representing. It's so good to have you. And uh, tonight we want to talk about what we call the family ritual protocol. As, as you know, probably from the book or, or you will find out, we've got six protocols for how to do family as God designed. They include emotional intelligence and identity. And, and then this third one is the family ritual protocol. And really what the, the purpose of the family, you want to read the purpose? Yeah, I'm just protocols. going to read it straight out of the book. The purpose of the family legacy ritual protocol is to equip the family to engage in a regular, intentional family meeting that makes doing family together life-giving, supportive, purposeful, and fun, while empowering the entire family to succeed. It is a loosely structured gathering where families build memories, learn lessons, share life, and honor God as appropriate to each unique family dynamic. Yeah, so I I'm curious. I I'll go first and ask Leslie, and then I'd like to ask you, as a kid growing up in Waterloo, Iowa, right, mom, dad, I had an older sister, younger brother, there's three of us little kids, and we had dinner together probably six nights a week, uh, pretty much every night. Now we had activities at night, but, and you know, not everybody was there as we got a little older and teenagers and everything, but pretty much Every night. How about, what was it like for you? It was the same for me. We had dinner was on the table at five o'clock every night. And uh, there was a whooping if you were late for the dinner table. So the purpose of this family ritual that we're talking about is to create a fun, uh, loving, respectful, you know, intimate, uh, growing space. It, that was not my experience at the dinner table. It was a very frightening place to be. You wanted to eat and get away as fast as possible. So that's not what we're going to be teaching tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I bet it's varied. How, how about, how about, uh, how about, let's just go straight down. John, Joe, how many nights you guys pretty much with your littles having dinner every night or close, or what's that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, three for sure where we'll sit down. Well, probably more with the weekends. No, probably at least four or five where we'll sit down at the table. Together. Okay, great. How about you, Bonnie? When you were raising the family and having kids, what was that like for you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was not paying attention. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's all right. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're fine. We're just inquiring about, you know, when you were raising the kids and they were little, you know, was that a regular thing for you to have a uh, meal time together? Yeah, we, we really tried. It was hard um, once they started getting involved in sports. So, um, but we, we did try. Yeah. To have gotcha. that as a regular thing. Yep. Yeah. And Friday nights, we always, that was like family night. We would always do something totally together. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Priscilla, Sarah. I, um, yes, we would have most of the time. My husband did work shift work, so he wasn't always there, but we would always try to eat together. Yeah. And I try to eat together as much as I can, but <laughs> uh, the littles, my two kids don't always appreciate the ability or have the ability to 
sit at the table and eat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we're trying to train the two, the three-year-old to do so. Yeah. And Amy, we heard from your mom, so we know there. And, you know, th those experiences are very different. So for you, it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. It was you never knew what you're going to get. Uh, for me, it was it was different than that. And, and you guys, the, the truth is, I want, I want to have Leslie just read a couple of stats out of the book. The research shows that when families have a meal together and quality time, so it can be it can be negative. That's a whole other story. But when it when it's productive time, listen, listen to some of these stats. Go ahead, just yes, read. these are these are specific benefits of family dinners, uh, better academic performance, higher self-esteem a greater sense of resilience. This was interesting, lower risk of substance abuse, lower risk of teen pregnancy, lower risk of depression, lower likelihood of developing eating disorders, uh, lower rates of obesity. I think that's it on that page. So really interesting benefits uh, and, and something that more and more research shows is not happening in the American family. and add to that the advent obviously right of of these little technology devices right here and so much time energy attention focus is dispersed and there's very little quality time that happens around america's dinner tables according to the stats so um a very important ritual so you know, one of the ways that when we when we worked on the book and wrote it, one of our questions was this, how does God do family? That was a really sincere question that we looked at every that lens. We're like, OK, we've got our own ideas. You know, there's lots of ideas on how to do family. But what was God's idea? And so we looked really a lot uh, at all the protocols about what did he do with with his family, right? Israel. One of the things he did is he instituted the Sabbath or the Shabbat, which was a weekly gathering of the family for the following. Let's see. Well, oh, here's our, yeah, of course, the book and workbook and the protocols. Uh, by the way, all these how-to videos are in the e-course. So you can see, you know, the book, workbook, e-course is the core of the whole project. But in, in, the, in the Shabbat and in the ritual, it's a little bit of planning. The big thing probably just being intentional, like choosing to focus. It's not just enough to eat together. That's good. But how do we maximize intentionally those few moments where we're all together? And we do that by having some great food, having some story time. This was how God did family in the Sabbath. There was story time. There was basically a coaching time or a, you know, a support brought to individuals in the family. What are you facing? What are the challenges? What are the solutions? How can we help? That kind of camaraderie that was one for all, all for one. There was, there was a sharing of wisdom and there was fun, a lot of laughs and a lot of shared work. You know, the cleanup and the cooking, all that was shared. It's really interesting when you think about, well, how, how would God have dinner time? We actually can see how how that was if we look at how he did it and the ritual uh, the family ritual is that and you see it there on the right it's a regular intentional family meeting that makes doing family together as leslie said life-giving supportive purposeful and fun while empowering the entire family to succeed right so it's not just it's great to have meal time together but that's not enough um, you know, I, my parents, we got the food got down our throats, so we got nourished at night. But, you know, as I said, it wasn't a really pleasant environment. And if you watch any, I don't know, if you just click the TV and if you're going around watching movies or shows and they do show a family having dinner together, somebody's got their face in the phone, usually the teenagers, or maybe it's even mom or dad. I was um, speaking to a gal the other day I'm, uh, around I'm writing a book on mother, mother wounds. And she was sharing how so many mothers now they're, they're cradling their baby and there's no eye contact with the baby, which is crucial for development. You see these moms and their faces in their phone and the baby's getting fed, but the baby's not getting soul nourished. And that's part of the, the this family ritual is that we're we're feeding each other's souls. Present. 
we're present with with our family members we're we're listening to them we're we're looking at them we're inviting them into into this real like what's your week going like what's going on in your life right now what are the lessons that you're learning and and how do we we how do we support you in that whether that's may, might be a kid in school um, or a college kid, or maybe it's an adult child that's looking at a new a career change. I mean, it's endless. Our lives are are busy and complicated, but the whole purpose of it really is to bring that unity and that cohesiveness in the family where where you feel loved, where you feel heard and listened to. Mm-hmm. And you know, we all try to do that all the time, but this this ritual makes certain it's as randy said it's it's being intentional around that time good thank you so before we get into the a basic framework and just kind of talk through it a couple more things one is this looks different depending on your children right if you've got little kids that's going to be different if you've got adult kids who aren't even in the house you know you can still do this ritual so it's not as important that this is not necessarily an every night kind of experience or even several night. It could be. But the, the idea is to at least once a week, again, after God's pattern, at least once a week where there's an intentional, especially as children are being raised in the home, right? When, they're, when you have adult children, it might go to once a month because they might live in different you know, states or nations, they may have to do some virtual, you may have to really maximize, you know, family gatherings like Thanksgiving and Christmas. I know we do that when we when we have our family together. Now, we really make sure to intentionalize those moments. And, and it has really become so easy. It's not hard. Okay, Leslie's hashtag, right? It's not hard. It is just it's just being intentional. And so let's, uh, I'm going to share another tool that we have. Um, we have a tool in the workbook called the, uh, and I think it's in the book as well, called the Ritual Idea Tool. Mm -hmm. And the Ritual Idea Tool is a whole list of ideas about, uh, about, you know, these, these uh, different bullet points over here. For example, this is page 180 in the book, the Ritual Idea Tool. So food ideas. I mean, you, you, you know, some families don't have any problem with food, some do, but you get fun. The idea is to include people in the planning and have fun with it. So you could do something like, you know, I'm gonna let you share this. You're the foodie. Well, the backup on this too, is there's a little pre-planning with this and, and Randy writes about it in the book, but having just that initial, Hey guys, you know what we've decided moving forward, we're going to have, we're going to do a, a regular family ritual meal together. And so, you know, it's that brainstorming, you're all sitting around the living room or whatever. And, and okay. So next week is going to be pizza. And maybe the week after that, it's going to be Thai food, or we're going to, you know, make Subway sandwiches, whatever it is, everybody gets, gets buy-in. Everybody gets weigh in where they, they they feel like they're included. Okay. This is going to be fun. And honestly, that works with little kids. It works all the way up to big kids. Cause Let's be honest, food is the sixth love language. I know the book only says five, but food is definitely the sixth. Can I get an amen? Amen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very good. <laughs> so that's part of it. That's that setup of, okay, we're going to put some thought process into it. And then then the, everybody can participate in it. Maybe, maybe somebody's going to chop vegetables and somebody else is going to bring, you know, bring the bread or, or whatever it is. Everybody plays a part in it. Even if it's somebody that could care less about food, you know, put them in charge of drinks. Like, all right, your turn to, you know, bring the pop tonight or the iced tea or, mm-hmm. or whatever that might be. So the idea is that everybody gets excited about it. So it's not just, okay, we're going to mom and dad's for dinner um, Sunday after church. And, you know, to have the regular pot roast, nothing wrong with pot roast, by the way, but, you know, where, where they're engaged, right? We, our society has become so separated and our families, the American family is so fragmented anymore. I mean, the divorce rate is 50%, right? So at least half families are, unfortunately, if there's children are splitting their times between households even. Um, so it's really important that we're intentional about this. It's good. And, and, and giving everybody way in, right, their favorites the, or the tour of nations or something to look forward to, doing the shopping, doing the prep, doing the serving, doing the cleanup. 
it's something that we are doing together and you're creating an environment. And that's, that's part of, uh, you know, the next idea is for stories. So one of the things that happens, you're sitting around and you're eating, you know, you're eating good food and all of a sudden it's story time. And so mom or dad leads or just opens it. Yeah. I like to lead because I set the environment. Like when I, when I, when I share a specific around a story, let's say, we do things like off of our family crest. We take a characteristic of that's on our crest, courage or perseverance or authenticity or empathy or things we've identified are a part of our family identity. That's another good way to, you know, uh, reiterate that. And we say, tell me a story, uh, you know, about perseverance or I'll tell a story. This last couple of weeks or since we had our last family legacy, our family ritual. Um, I've really had to practice perseverance in figuring out how to make a one page ad. I know this sounds silly, but if we're going to be successful at reaching families and helping families, we've got to figure out how to communicate what we do in a really simple, short, clear way that's compelling. And that's been really challenging for me. And I've wanted to quit and I have quit some, but I keep coming back to it. And I'm so what, I, what I'm doing is I'm just being vulnerable about something real in life. Uh, you know, I maybe may talk about, you know, my health journey or my weight loss journey right now. That's another thing that I'm really working on. And it's a really big part of my, my life right now. And so I would, I would pick something that's really relevant that to me, meaningful to me. And it might even be something different. You know, there's story ideas on here you know, what's one of the things you love about the person to your right? We do this oftentimes too. Hey, you know what? This, this is going to be our story time. So I love, you know, I love Leslie and I just love how she's authentic. I love how she serves. No, I don't know anybody that loves like she loves, you know, last week, you know, she just went out of her way to, you know, she, I, I lost, this is a common thing, by the way, we misplace things. It's terrible. And, and getting old when either one of us misplace something, it's funny. I'll notice the other one immediately stops whatever we're doing. And we're all on a mission together. We're, we're looking all over together to find this thing, to search it out. I don't have to ask her. She doesn't have to ask me because what concerns her concerns me and vice versa. And we just, we go like all hands on deck. We got to find the, whatever it is we've lost. The reading glasses that are usually stuck on top of our heads, a good, a good one. Sad, but true. Like, like I said, being vulnerable. But it's inviting the rest of the family into whatever that is. Like Randy was talking about perseverance. And I know that's a big word for maybe some of the little kids out there. Um, but, but you can still invite them. Well, what's something that you, you know, that you're really working on getting done this week? You know, maybe it's, maybe it's practicing their letters. Oh, I'm really struggling with the letter B or the violin or the violin or whatever it is. So you really can, you can really, it's not hard to make these age appropriate. And I just want to put a little caveat in there. I know we have mostly our Matthews family here and that's live right now, but anybody that's watching or will be watching this later, our families look different right? I know this looks like, okay, well, this is the mom and dad with the 2.5 kids and the cat and the dog. You know, 40 years ago, that's what the American family looked like. It doesn't look like that anymore. And there's no judgment in it. It is what it is. So we've got, we've got 50% of our population that's being raised by single parents, either a mom or a dad, or there's the shared situation. Some people don't have parents at all. A family unit might be a brother and sister that are living together, or it could be grandparents raising kids. Um, and frankly, it could be a group of friends that found themselves orphaned for whatever reason, and they have formed their own family unit. So I want to be really careful that this is for anybody that has a family unit, whatever that looks like. It's good. These, these principles transcend the model of, of what you know, this, this is not exclusive to the American family that we knew, Ozzy and Harriet, in the 50s. It's not. I'm sorry, some people probably don't know who Ozzy and Harriet are. <laughs> well, it goes way back. We're really old. So, so it's good. But so this is a, this is a fun time to hear, to have everybody participate. It teaches social skills. It teaches vulnerability. It teaches about the character and nature of your family of God. It's, it's just, 
it's profoundly uh, impactful and it's, and it's simple, but it, because it's simple to do, I write this in the book, it's simple not to do. Yeah. It's simple to sit around and tell stories, but it's simple not to just to get lazy and pick up a phone or a computer. So, so, you know, we're listening to each other around important things. And then another aspect is, it's just, you know, switched over to maybe a sharing of wisdom, which could look like so many different things. It could look like reading a proverb. It could look like asking, Hey, you know, here's a verse. Let's think about this. What does this verse mean? And what does it, and this is important. What would it look like this week for you, you know, Miranda, for you, Leslie, Randy, for you, Bob, Susie, what would it look like for you to love somebody um, this week? And get it down to the application of the ideas, not just the ideas. I mean, if there's any big failure for the most part of the church, big C, in the world, it's that we talk ideas and knowledge, but we don't work it all the way through to practice and application. And, and I mean, you know, that's not an indictment or a criticism, but an observation. If, if we were doing that, we would have different results right now in our families, in our businesses, our communities, in our churches, in the nations. So we got some room to grow. But it's just sharing some wisdom. And I, you know, there's no better place than Proverbs. We, we still read a proverb every day. And oftentimes we'll just take a, a little nugget out of there and bring it into the conversation with the idea of understanding the concept, but then applying it in life. And then there's the coaching piece. And you, you know, this, before you think this could take forever, it, it's not that bad, really. Not everybody has to share it on every one of these bullet points, but you know, you can make sure everybody does get to share something, but the coaching is just simply, especially for your kids are a little bit older or certainly adults. They're working on making a decision about who to date or what job to take or where to go to college or, you know, fill in the blank. And it's a great opportunity for a simple coaching conversation. There's a five, mm -hmm. a five question coaching model that's, uh, I think it's on page 160, I think it is. Let me see if I can find it real quick here. Um, it's just a, it's just a very simple, and it might seem awkward until you get used to using it, but, oh, that's not it. So that's not that one. So anyway, it's just basically what's your goal or what's important to you right now and how's it going? What are the challenges? How are you gonna overcome the challenges and how can we help? So it's teaching, get this now, think about this environment. This is environmental engineering. This was the wisdom, brilliance of God. He said, once a week, families get together and you're gonna have a really good food, which is a fun experience. You're gonna have storytelling. You're gonna have wisdom and you're gonna support each other. You're gonna help. The environment of dinner is not gonna be stressful. It's not gonna be trouble time. It's gonna be, building time, development time. It's going to be prime real estate for, for growth and development of what's most important. And the coaching, I mean, who doesn't want to be a part of a family that helps me make really hard decisions that I'm confused about? That's a really good. Yeah. Thing. And that, that coach approach too. Um, and, and don't be discouraged if, you know, some of us are older, we didn't start doing these until, the book was, you know, in the process of writing the book with adult kids. So you can do this with, with adult children, but it's really, really powerful when you're raising children. It teaches them critical thinking and it, it teaches them how to solve their own issues it, in an environment where you, because you're, you're asking them questions like, what, do you, what are you trying to get accomplished this week? Well, you know, I, I've got this big exam coming up and I really need to pull an A on it because it it's going to matter on my college exams, something like that. Okay, well, what are you going to need to do to get that A? And so, and so they answer, well, I'm going to need to study for, <laughs> for starters. You know, I need to put some time in around this. Okay, well, how can we support you in that? And it could be something like, well, you know what? I, I really need it quiet. So if you can keep my younger brother and sister from barging into my room 
you know, after supper for a couple hours, man, that would be really, really helpful. And so they come up with their own solution and then the family gets to all come around and, and support that, man, that just, that feels, that feels good. Like my family cares, they're for me. And not only that, in the process, we're teaching our children how to do it with their families. We all, we all go with what we know. Whatever we learned as a kid, we basically take that and decide that's how you do family or how you don't do family in some cases. And, but to be intentional about this and to, you know, the repetition and the emotional implant, and this is what really makes things sticky, if I can say it that way. The thing that makes us remember what's important is when there's an emotional implant. How emotional is it to laugh, to eat great food, to hear good stories, to get support around the things in life, to hear some wisdom? And the last piece is, is fun. And so play a game, whatever's fun for you, right? For us, sometimes it's Catan, although that's a long game. Man, that's a long one. Settlers of Catan, are you guys familiar with that game? <laughs> wow, it's, it's a nation building game. It's fun. And we, we love it. We put epic, the kids, they'll put on Bluetooth speaker and they'll have like uh, big booming or Lord of the, the Rings music, yeah, Lord of the Rings, epic music, dun, 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 you know, cause it's. And whatever, whatever your family defines fun. I, we were, had the pleasure of being with, with John and Joe a month or so ago. And, and the, the girls brought the game out to the table and it was just, it was delightful. So these can be done at any age. Gosh, we, we do this ritual with, with my parents out in California mm -hmm. and my 84 year old mother is, mm -hmm. we've learned is quite the card shark. So <laughs> she, it will cut you. She'll pray for you all day. Oh, in her she's prayer a closet, beautiful woman. And then she will cut you. At she the will cut table. you at the card table. <laughs> so whatever the fun is, we're, we're coming up on our time here. Do you guys have any questions around this? We can't hear you if you're talking, unmute there. I think you guys all have the, the book in the workbook, at least the Matthews. For those of you that are tuning in or watching this later, again, this is, this is the, the family legacy shaping culture from the inside out. Uh, tonight we were talking about the family ritual. There are six protocols in this book. There's an accompanying workbook and an e-course um, and you can get information. Uh, on our page there if you're interested or feel free to reach out to us anything else left? yeah I, I wasn't sure if somebody was trying to ask a question or not we'll we'll stay on just for a more a few more moments if anybody got any questions or comments yeah i don't have a question though it's just nice to know the stats too about the importance of having family dinners together and i definitely look back and can think of lots of things to laugh about at the family dinner table and just uh, really brought the family together and we were always yelling on top of each other and talking talking not like bad yelling you know what I mean and it was just a good time yeah and you know if you're if we don't get that kind of uh social interaction that that beautiful bonding and intimacy in our family we're driving our kids outside to to get it somewhere else which is why the stats are around addiction and teen pregnancy. People need connection, they need love. And if they're not getting in their family of origin, they're gonna go out and find it somewhere. So let's, let's, let's take care of it in the family. Let's get our families, everybody, everybody watching or watching this later, let's get our families back to God's mm -hmm. original design. Family's supposed to be safe and fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Th this ritual protocol, is what I call the meat and potatoes of passing on legacy. So the other protocols are all important, but this regular intentional time together where you're creating an environment that is what we've talked about, safe, trusting, fun, you know, supportive, um, uh, informative, teaching, that kind of an environment for our families and our kids is absolutely uh, God's design. And we, we can't really improve on his design as much as we think we can. Doing it his way is the way to do it. And so um, 
if you've got a question, wave at me. Otherwise, we're going to sign off for tonight, and uh, hopefully you'll go. I'd, I'd love to hear back. Maybe the next time when we, we uh, have our uh, virtual family forum, if any of you are on, you can report out just briefly about, hey, we did the ritual thing, and uh, here's what happened and, or, or something. I, we'd really love to, to hear, again, not just know about these things, but do these things. And, uh, and we will, too. We'll keep doing it. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you.